Taiwan will give flowers at Abe's funeral. Huge copper squeeze is coming. U.S. credit card interest rates to hit record high. Putin allies express concern over mobilization. Space telescopes really can see the past. Russia piles up 100 million tons of wheat. NASA's spacecraft crashes into an asteroid. Singapore, now Asia's top finance center. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Monday, September 26th, and here are your top stories. The South China Morning Post reported that Japanese government sources said that last Saturday, Japan is planning to include Taiwan among the names of countries to be read aloud during flower offerings at former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's state funeral this week. The plan appears to have been made out of consideration for the close ties Abe had built with Taiwan. If carried out, sources said that Japan is likely to refer to the self-rule island as Taiwan, not as the Republic of China, its official name for itself. The media reported that Taiwanese representatives will be seated between areas for delegates from countries around the world and those for international organizations. Taiwan is expected to be placed next to Palestine, which is also not a recognized country. Taiwan's delegation includes Taiwan-Japan Relations Association Chairman Su Jia Chen, former legislative speaker Wang Jinping, and Frank Xie, Taiwan's current de facto ambassador to Japan and former premier. The price of copper has fallen by nearly a third since March. Investors are selling on fears that a global recession will stun demand for a metal that's synonymous with growth and expansion. Some of the largest miners and metals traders are warning that in just a couple of years' time, a massive shortfall will emerge for the world's most critical metal. The recent downturn and the underinvestment that ensues only threatens to make it worse. Wells Fargo predicted it's going to need a lot of copper. Commodities experts have been warning of a potential copper crunch for months, if not years, and the latest market downturn stands to exacerbate future supply problems by offering a false sense of security, choking off cash flow, and chilling investments. Once less investment in copper mining out of prices falling and grim market outlook, it takes at least 10 years to develop a new mine and get it running, which means that the decisions producers are making today will help determine supplies for at least a decade. The U.S. Fed again pump up its benchmark interest rate another three quarters of a point. That means U.S. credit card interest rates, which move in tandem with Fed increases, will follow suit in 30 to 45 days. Senior industry analyst at Bankrate.com Ted Roseman said, in the next few months, there is a very good chance that the average rate will surpass the old-time record of 19% from July 1991. The average variable credit card rate is now 18.16%, the highest in 27 years. According to a new CreditCards.com report released last week, 59% of U.S. cardholders with under $50,000 in annual household income are carrying credit card debt. That's grim, especially because Rossman said, credit cards charge rates that are often three, four, or five times higher than other products such as mortgages, car loans, and student loans. He predicted that today's hike means that most credit card holders will soon face rates that are three full percentage points higher than they were at the start of the year. Russia's two most senior lawmakers on Sunday addressed a string of complaints about Russia's mobilization drive, ordering regional officials to get a handle on the situation and swiftly solve the excesses that have stoked public anger. Valentina Matvienko, the chairwoman of Russia's upper house, the Federation Council, said such excesses are absolutely unacceptable and I consider it absolutely right that they are triggering a sharp reaction in society. Matvienko was referring to reports of men who should be ineligible for the draft being called up. The media reported there have been several reports from across Russia of people with no military service or parents of young children being called up in the draft. Contrary to Defense Minister Sergei Shiogu's guarantee, the Speaker of the State Duma, Russia's lower chamber, also expressed concern. He said, complaints are being received. If a mistake is made, it is necessary to correct it.
The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, can look further back in time, observing distant stars and galaxies as they appeared 13.5 billion years ago, not long after the beginning of the universe as we know it, because light needs time to travel across the vast distances of space to reach us. When you are looking at objects that are millions or billions of miles away, as most objects in the night sky are, you are seeing light that has traveled a long, long way to reach you. Take the sun, for example. It sits an average of 150 kilometers away. That means it takes light about 8 minutes and 20 seconds to travel from the sun to Earth. So, when you look at the sun, you're seeing as it appeared more than 8 minutes ago, not as it appears right now. In other words, you're looking 8 minutes into the past. Since the JWST uses infrared sensing instruments, the telescope can peer into the past to study light that was emitted more than 13 billion years ago by the most ancient stars and galaxies in the universe. According to consultant South Econ, Russia's wheat harvest could reach a historic 100 million tons. The International Grants Council also hiked its Russia wheat crop estimate by almost 6 million tons to a similar volume last Thursday. But the export outlook remains unchanged at 36.5 million tons because it isn't expected that extra supply will leave the country. The government's export taxes and logistical issues from its war in Ukraine are keeping more grain than usual at home. Sovcon managing director Andrei Sizov said, Storage has been an issue for a few months for some farmers. While a deal to reopen the ports struck in July helped ease prices and exports, the escalation of the war in Ukraine has sent wheat back to levels seen before the agreement. Even Russian wheat export prices have recently turned more competitive, and food exports are not targeted by sanctions. But some institutions are wary of doing business with Russia as a result of those measures. It's time to get ready to watch a spacecraft slamming into an asteroid. The action from NASA's Double Asteroid Redirect Mission, also known as DART, will be streamed live on NASA TV and Space.com, including on September 26th, the impact day. DART will slam into Dimorphos, the moonlet of a near-Earth asteroid called Didymos, on that day. Last December, Funding News reported on how the unprecedented experiment will make a scene from the movie Armageddon come true. NASA's DART live coverage will start at 6 a.m. on September 27th, Taiwan time. It will begin in earnest with live images from the spacecraft Draco's imaging camera. The camera will broadcast live imagery as it comes in until impact, when it and the DART spacecraft will be destroyed. The public can also watch live on agency social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Impact will occur over an hour later at 7.14 a.m. Taiwan time. According to the latest report from Global Financial Centers Index, Singapore has overtaken Hong Kong in the latest ranking of the world's leading international financial centers. Hong Kong ranked fourth, while New York was ranked as the top financial center, followed by London and Singapore. Shanghai was sixth in the study and Beijing eighth. Shenzhen jumped one place to ninth. The Global Financial Centers Index is produced by the China Development Institute in Shenzhen and the London think tank Ziyan Partners. The report said continuing travel restrictions in places like Hong Kong and Tokyo affect their ability to conduct normal levels of business. Tokyo fell to 16th place, but last Thursday, Japanese officials said that they plan to end COVID-19 border control measures beginning October 11th. The ranking, released twice a year, is based on a global online survey of 11,038 financial professionals who evaluated 119 cities on 151 factors in five broad areas of competitiveness, including business environment, human capital, and reputation. Funded News will help sharpen your English skills while keeping you informed on current international events. Tune into other Funded programs to learn more about the world's most important topics in English. Click the link below now to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.